Hey, this is the Level Up Engineering Podcast, where we talk with some of the most successful tech leaders who reveal actionable management insights that help you take your developer team to the next level. This episode was brought to you by Coding Sans, a software development agency building web applications with Angular and Node.js. Check them out at CodingSans.com. Welcome to the Level Up Engineering Podcast. I am Carolina Thot. And today I am here with Nadia Alramli, who is the Director of Engineering for Products at HubSpot. Welcome, Nadia. Thank you very much, Carolina. Uh, we are glad to have you on the show. And before we dive into today's topic, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. So as you said, I am a Director of Engineering at HubSpot, which is a leading inbound marketing, sales, and a CRM growth platform. Our mission is to help millions of organizations grow better. And at HubSpot, I run the Marketing Campaigns Group, where we provide tools to help marketing teams attract and engage with our audiences. Before HubSpot, I worked in the video games industry, where I built backend services for the Call of Duty franchise, among other titles, for over a decade. In my spare time, I like to crochet miniature animals or spend time with wild gray squirrels. I actually trained gray squirrels to visit my home every day. I discovered that with enough nuts, I can basically entice any passing squirrel to come near me. And with enough patience and time, I can get them to be comfortable with me. This is how my friendship with wild squirrels in my back garden began. And I have several fluffy visitors a day. They are a regular sight in my work Zoom meetings. And sometimes they are hobbing all around me. Uh, so for that reason, my job title in work Slack is the Squirrel Whisperer. Nice. <laughs> we are glad to know that. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. Let's dive into today's topic, which was actually inspired by a blog post of yours that we found on the internet. So dearest listeners, if you haven't searched Nadia's name, you can take a second and do it now. We are going to talk about onboarding and joining a new company as an engineering manager or as an engineering leader. First of all, what are the challenges of being an engineering leader in a new company? I know that you joined HubSpot after working at the same company for 11 years. So so how was your experience? You see, the biggest challenge for a new leader, in my opinion, is building credibility and trust with all team members quickly enough before there is a need to step in to correct the path or make a decision. I have seen this really backfire in the past where new leaders can rush to prove themselves too quickly before they're ready. Sometimes it's because they lack the confidence, so they feel threatened. They overcompensate by micromanaging others. Maybe they're feeling they need to prove themselves, et cetera, et cetera. So they, they're micromanaging. Other times it's because they are overly confident and they feel they know it all. So instead of listening, they are acting. Both examples, in my opinion, are just as damaging. This is why I believe a well-done leadership onboarding process is essential. So this was something that I have really deeply considered that when I wanted to move to a new company, it was very important to me how that experience is going to look like. And that definitely was a consideration before moving to HubSpot. Wow. You were very thoughtful about uh, moving to a new company. So how was your experience? How did you choose HubSpot out of all the companies? I was contacted by HubSpot recruiter and I really left that sitting for three months. I was not really looking for a change. And um, eventually three months later, I decided to explore it. And what really made me seriously go for it was the onboarding process, to be honest, and the culture. Uh, but the onboarding process was really, really a huge factor for me. So you see, the HubSpot leadership onboarding process is a truly unique experience because every external engineering leader hired in HubSpot goes through this embedding process 
for their first six months. And during that period, they are treated exactly the same as any software engineer. So they are not directors, they are not leaders, they are just an individual contributor. Exactly, exactly. So they are exactly treated like an individual contributor. So they have no privileged access to information, no managerial responsibilities, no expectations beyond being a software engineer. They say they take the same training courses and go through the same onboarding process like everyone else. And during that period, by switching between different teams that they will eventually be responsible for, they are working on various tasks, delivering features, fixing bugs, and they actually report to the engineering leads of each team they are working with. So if they're working with a certain team, they are reporting to the engineering lead of that team. They switch to another team, they report to the engineering lead of that team. And, you know, that was such a, such an attractive proposition to me. And the other thing I want to point out that maybe the biggest misconception about an experience like this is that companies do it because they want the external engineering hires to spend time in the trenches, learning the tech stack. While this is maybe one of the reasons behind the embedding process, it's really far from the most important one. And that was explained to me from from day one. Yes, my embedding experience was a great way for me to learn the HubSpot tech stack, but honestly, the time spent learning the product details and guiding principles uh, were important But the most valuable part of the experience were the relationships that I built with the engineers. And those really, really were lasting relationships. Those were the trust that was built during this period was very, very important. I do want to say that the engineers really loved it. They really liked that I was experiencing every day like everyone else, that I was seeing things from their perspective. They also got to be my mentors too. I really discovered early on that engineers loved it when I asked them questions and they craved it. So I made sure to rotate my questions between everyone on the team. So everyone got the chance to correct my mistakes or teach me something new. These moments were really invaluable to me and the relationship that were built really left a lasting impression on everyone. So is this how this this works for every new external manager at HubSpot? Yeah. Yes. Yes, that is that is for everyone, everyone uh, from tech leads, engineering leads, directors, everyone. So if um, let's say I am working as an individual contributor on some team, do I get a heads up saying a new manager is being embedded for the next few weeks in your team? Please be a mentor to them in that you teach them how HubSpot works? Or is this kind of under the hood of, of HR? No, they know that people will know that that they are man. So they have the title as in the person will have a director title in name, but they don't really have any privilege. So people will know that they are, for example, a director. It's not a secret. And people will know that like, okay, you know, a director is going to be on our team for several weeks or a month or so on Um, so it's not really a hidden uh, fact Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's really interesting is there any difference between how new engineers are onboarded to what you just uh, explained to us no there's no difference in that the directors will go the same onboarding process of new engineers And let me explain how engineers are onboarded. So that would explain the details of the director's onboarding from a HubSpot onboarding experience in general, uh, outside from a leadership part. So the HubSpot onboarding focuses on creating a personalized experience for every individual. We're really thoughtful about connecting people with their managers even before they start. I actually was in contact via email with my manager for three months before starting in HubSpot. Wow. I had a long notice with my previous employer 
and uh, I had to wait for three months before joining HubSpot. And during that time, I was in constant contact with my manager and he responded to every question I had. And he shared a a lot of resource resources with me. Um, We had threads in Gmail that spanned, I don't know, like we had several threads. Some of them had, you know, 30, 40 emails. And, you know, I was able to build a lasting relationship with him even before officially starting. And the experience from there starts, you know, after the, the new hire joins, it starts with the social aspect of the orientation where we reaffirm why they are here, introduce them to other new hires as well as their teammates and leaders. It's worth noting as well that we have been really adaptive with the current events. Our learning and development team have translated our typical icebreaker events and games into a virtual form. And that's really been very interesting to see how quickly they have really adapted everything. The next stage of onboarding covers the foundation of our business, how we fit into the SaaS ecosystem, our business model, our system, customers' needs, etc. Following that is a really important part where we have a product onboarding workshop that is built specifically to help engineers to onboard them on our tech stack. So the workshop walk them through building a front end and a back end project. We encourage them to work in a cohort. They can ask questions if they're stuck. There's no fixed time limit to get it done. We often assign them an onboarding buddy, help them to help them and provide guidance if anything needed outside their direct managers. How do you document your onboarding process at HubSpot? We have Plenty of documentation. I mentioned earlier, we have a onboarding workshop. It's very well documented. We also have an interesting thing. We have also guides that go both ways for both individual contributors and also for managers and tech leads. For example, when a new hire join, we actually send guides to their managers and tech leads. So someone joins, as a manager, you get an email that have a helpful guide from the wiki. You know, here's how to make somebody feel welcome. Here's how to onboard a new team member. Here's all sort of helpful, useful information for a new manager. So we don't assume that you know that stuff. We help you anyway. And then for individual contributors, we also have included additional new guides right now. So we also have guides on how to work remotely. How awesome. Why is it important, in your opinion, to have very well-documented onboarding processes? I think this is really important because this is your first experience when you're joining a new company. This is the first thing you see. So if you don't do this right, this could really taint the whole thing. I consider myself to be really introverted and... I found that the embed really was so helpful at making me feel very welcomed and at ease while not making me also feel overwhelmed as well. So each team really made me feel very welcomed in my previous roles. I often would feel that people didn't really see me as approachable in the past no matter how much I tried, uh, they would really just see me as a manager. While in HubSpot, I felt that the embed really helped in getting people to not take me as seriously in a social environment. Mm-hmm. So like they would really, you know, joke with me. They w- we would have like in jokes, they would mess with me, you know, and I loved it. You know, I, I really like the fact that they're not taking me too seriously. And I think that really, really helped later. So I am really thankful for the embed process for making that possible. I don't think that would have been possible otherwise. I had over a decade, like I said, in a previous company, and that was not enough to have that kind of relationship in some cases, while even a few months and even weeks with some teams were enough to have a closer relationship with an embed. Wow. So this process is really successful in how you view it. If some of our listeners are here to 
perhaps try this embedding process out on their own. What do you think the crucial factors are that make this process actually successful? Honestly, what makes it really successful in HubSpot is the fact that it's taken really seriously by senior, by senior management and leadership. No one, and I mean no one, is allowed to distract you or pull you out of your role when you're embedding. You are protected from the distractions and responsibilities of being a manager, no matter the pressure or the need for you to step into your managerial role immediately. Everyone in HubSpot, from senior management to the ICs, believe in the importance of the process. I have really experienced this firsthand. When I was embedding, I remember that toward the end of my embed, I would have people that were really tentative, very tentative in their reach, they would tell me, is it time? Like, is it really okay to talk to you now? They were really hesitant. They would mention my boss and they would say, he said, we, we, we can't talk to you or not to talk to you. Even when I would reach out to them, they, they would say, is it okay if we respond? I would say, no, no, it's, it is okay. You know, I'm actually about to finish my embed now. It's, it's time. And it's really, really interesting how they seriously, they took it. And the result of this that, is that new managers get to go through a thoughtful, in-depth training experience and the employees can get a more empathetic and adaptive leader because they're able to put their whole focus on this. Mm -hmm. The point is for you to actually come out a manager as if you had been with the company for quite a while. Like you are rising to become a manager and you feel like you are already at home you are not just stepping in as a manager yeah you want to feel at home when you finish that embed you do want to though make sure that during that embed it's your whole focus the thing is though is that it is understandable that there's going to be a period after you finish your embed where you're gonna need to spend some time where you are getting up to speed on being a manager. Because, you know, obviously during this period, you're focused on being an engineer, not on being a manager. So there's gonna be a period toward the end. We talked about six months of being an engineer, but toward the end, usually the last month, there's a period where there's you start to get a little bit of introduction to, okay, here's a little bit of information about the engineers, here's what's going on in the org, here's a little bit about the strategy, here's a bit about the vision. You start to be included a little bit in meetings, just a little bit to ramp you up, but not fully. And then by the time you finish the embed, that's where you're fully included in everything. And then you really start to fully start to get up to speed onto your role. But it is understandable that you're still gonna need to spend a little bit to really also on board on your role because you know there's still also things you need to get up to speed on to get to you know there's all sort of things that were not even accessible to you you know the, right. all sort of documents and information that were completely hidden to you when you're embedding so that's also something to recognize that something uh, happens when you're embedded but you know what it'll become faster because i remember when i was embedding i was getting to know people and, and I get to know their strengths, their areas of improvements and all of it. And when I started to get information about everybody later, it all clicked, it all made sense to me because I got to know them from close distance. And it was a lot easier for me to process that information. In fact, in a lot of times, I felt that I had to add to it, in fact, and I know I knew even more information wow. that I could even improve on it. Wow, that that's really awesome. Thank you for sharing that. What was the process like when you were joining and you were starting your embedding process? Did you have regular one-on-ones with some kind of a manager? I am interested in how the company can see that an embedding process is successful. You know, like, do you have a diary or, or are there some measurement numbers? So 
during the embed process, I am reporting to the engineering leads in that the regular one-to-ones are happening with the engineering leads. So that, that eventually they will be reporting to me. So it's really interesting that they, I'm reporting to them, they eventually will report to me. And my eventual manager also has one-to-ones, but they are less frequent. And I think it was actually once every month. They, they're really far less frequent and they're kind of more check-ins and like how things are happening. That being said, I remember asking, how am I going to be measured on, on my success? And Eric Richard, who actually was my manager at the time, and he is also our uh, SVP of engineering, he describes the expectations of a successful embed really well in an article he wrote in the HubSpot product blog, and also described it to me when I asked him about it. And the way he described it is that he assesses It's about the leader building the credibility from within the team by getting their hands dirty. So it's about building that deep understanding of the development philosophy and living it firsthand and building that empathy and intuition for all team members during that embed and that deep understanding of the customer needs and product roadmaps from having, again, lived it and faced it on daily fa- daily basis. Finally, there's the, the understanding of the tech stack, which is, again, the last thing on the list. Because, again, many people mistakenly think that the understanding of the tech stack is the highest priority, when in fact it is intentionally prioritized last. So, again, the way we assess the success is about the relationships and the team, team building. So how this is assessed is it comes down to seeing is the leader able to get that credibility from their teams? Are they able to get the credibility and trust when they're working and embedding with their teams? So they are reporting to their engineering leads. Are their engineering leads reporting uh, that they are feeling positively about this leader, you know? Mm-hmm. Because you know they are the manager now, so so really you know it's about how the engineering leader who is now your manager reporting your work, but more from a credibility, from a relationship building, from a trust perspective. Mm-hmm. I also remember something that I felt there, there's a something that happens often, and I remember Eric Richard told me about this this. Imp- imposter syndrome that can happen to you because oftentimes you come, especially for a role like a director, you're often in manager, a manager for a long time, you're rusty on tech and you come, you're surrounded with brilliant engineers and you feel that you're, you're not adequate enough and you can have this feeling that you're, you're not doing enough. And I definitely had plenty of that going on when I was embedding. And Eric really warned me about it, plenty. I write about it in, in my article as well. And also uh, my main experience was in backend. And I also, during my embed, I had to do front end work as well. And that was quite a challenge. So what was interesting as well is that, uh, I remember one of my engineering leads told me that he appreciated that he felt that I had insight to share that he felt demonstrated senior engineering insight, uh, even if I did not have the experience of the, the language experience, like the Java experience, for example, that the lens, because like my background was in Python, not in Java. I was actually learning Java when I moved to HubSpot. He was explaining that he felt the fact that I was able to coordinate tasks between teams. I was looking at the big picture. I was able to think about the customer's perspective. I was thinking about things from, a, you know, included dependencies, multiple dependencies and thinking ahead. Those are things that demonstrated seniority and all of that. So it was really interesting. Like it was like a true 
manager report kind of relationship. So I was I would be given feedback on my performance from the engineering leads. And that actually helped me build my confidence as well in my work. Wow. That thank you for sharing that story. So uh, this question is aimed at highlighting the benefits of this process. Because we all know how it is when you get a regular on board. You're kind of introduced to everyone and maybe you get a 30, 60, 90 day plan and um, maybe you are closely monitored by your actual manager. But um, what do you think is the downside to not having an embedding process for your new engineering leaders? Honestly, it makes it difficult for new engineering leaders to get up to speed and build that trust with their teams. It also introduces that risk of having the external leaders rush into their role without spending time to try and understand their teams or business first. As I mentioned earlier, uh, when I was talking about the, the two types of people that would often jump onto micromanaging or overconfidence and rushing to decision without listening. That is the risk that I've seen often, and that can really happen without an embedding process. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you. It's, it's, a, it's a very interesting insight. I have not met with a company that had a, a similar process to yours before. So what do you think companies should have in place to make something similar work for them? So obviously it is a big investment that the company should be willing to make. After all, you are investing in a leader for six months of doing engineering work first. You are hiring them for a reason. You might want them urgently, and this is an investment. So you need to have buy-in from the rest of the organization and everyone needs to respect the process. An embedded name only where the leader is still carrying a manager responsibility and being pulled in every direction would just simply not work. I do want to really say that when I'm talking about my embed, HubSpot needed me in my role. I was really needed in my role. They were looking for somebody to fill the role for several months. My manager had so many teams reporting to him. I think he had at least three, four groups at the time, he, ha he was running the whole product group, just like the whole engineering <laughs> in HubSpot. And he had so many. He honestly told me at the time, if I felt I wanted even more time embedding, he was willing to, t to give me that time. That's how, how much he was committed. And the thing is, like my group had over 40 people in, in engineering that were reporting. This is just in engineering only, not to mention all the other we were talking here about like, a, you know, a lot of people in, in products that, again, a lot of responsibilities on his shoulders. And the fact he's willing to make that commitment just shows how much investment he's willing to make because we believe in the importance of that process. So, again, this is what you need to have in place to make a similar onboarding process works. So it's really commitment is what I'm hearing, you know, from yes. the highest level through to yes, everyone. Exactly. And, you know, this is, you know, it's not, it wasn't just from him because this is engineering, but also the commitment came from product, from design as well. My peers, we work in triads. Um, so when I would complete the process, I had a, a peers in product and design. They were so eager for me to finish my embed. Like they were dying for me to finish my embed because like they were carrying as well additional load because I was still embedding and they respected the process as well. And they did not distract me. So again, they would have to respect it too. Right. So as you mentioned, it's an expensive process, right? So you are really not doing the job that they hired you for, for quite a few months. What do you suggest to companies that can't afford to to have an engineering leader embed for for half a year what do you think is the best alternative to this i would honestly recommend doing even a short embed for say one to two months the longer the better i would say any any embed period is better than nothing 
if you can afford any period, then I would go for it. You might think that you can't afford it. I would actually say you can because the short-term pain of waiting one or two months is worth the long-term gain. That's my challenge is that any short-term embed is worth it. That's my recommendation. Thank you for that. We have talked through a lot of your experience. You have mentioned uh, the benefits of uh, building a really strong social connection to the teams that you will lead. You have highlighted the importance of uh, the commitment of senior leadership to anybody's embedding process. And we also talked about, you know, the challenges of the other teams who are waiting for you to, to finish your embedding process. Is there anything else that we haven't mentioned and you think is important uh, to highlight to our listeners? As a matter of fact, yes. I want to say that while it's not surprising that the HubSpot leadership embedding process attracts many leadership candidates to us, what is really interesting is that our engineering and engineering candidates also love the fact that we require our leaders to embed and see this investment as a sign that we care about them. So leadership embedding has become an attractive factor for non-leadership candidates too. I actually have made it a point now to mention the fact that I have personally embedded that we personally require the embed every time I interview a candidate. And the response is overwhelmingly positive. People are, their eyes like just lit up when, I, when I, they hear that and they are so excited to hear it. So it's just an interesting thing to mention that engineers love that fact. They see it as an investment in them. They see it as that we actually care about them, that we are investing in leaders that are willing to actually experience day to day with them and actually see what is it like to work on the same tasks. So they are more empathetic and they are as a result, better leaders. Mm -hmm. You've been at HubSpot for a year and a half now, correct? Yeah, yeah. How do you view yourself at this point? This this makes it, you know, you, you spent half a year on your embedding and you've been in your actual position for, for a year. How would you describe your experience altogether? Absolutely amazing. I want to say that I remember when I was interviewing at HubSpot, I thought, ah, oh, this sounds too good to be true. You know, I was saying to myself, if this was even, I don't know, half as good as it sounds, it would still be good. And now I'm thinking it was undersold to me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just love it every day. I love every minute of it. Sometimes it doesn't feel like I'm working. The culture here is such a loving and an empathetic culture where everyone uh, cares so deeply, cares about the customer, cares about each other. And it, it really showing right now uh, as well, more than ever. But also at the same time, you know, you work around brilliant people that hold themselves to high standards as well, which is really motivating. I just love it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for joining us today. I am sure our listeners would love to read your article and uh, would love to follow your work. Where should they do that? So I'm trying to get into the habit of writing more often. I have two articles right now. I have more on the way. If you want to read more about my embedding experience, I have at HubSpot where I have more details. You can check my article at uh, medium.com slash at Nadiana, uh, N-A-D-I-A-N-A. -A -A. Awesome. So, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you for joining us. Dearest listeners, we are thankful that you could stick with us to the end. If you listen to the show regularly, please leave a review on your favorite podcast streaming service. Today, my guest was Nadia Al-Ramli. 
the director of engineering at HubSpot for products. And she shared her experience with the embedding process that she had to go through, which apparently was really amazing. We thank you, Nadia, for joining us today. Thank you very much. I am Karolina Tot, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for staying with Level Up Engineering. If you enjoyed this podcast, so will your friends. Share this episode on your favorite social networking platform. To stay up to date with our content, follow Level Up Engineering on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or Google Podcast. Brought to you by Coding Sans, a software development agency building web applications with Angular and Node.js. Check them out at codingsans.com. <laughs>